Washington today. Um, uh, I just found out that Amanda, raise your hand, give some props if you saw Amanda Gorman yesterday, the uh, poet reciting a most amazing, amazing, amazing. I mean, I know a lot of things are gonna make a comeback, but poetry all in one day, really? Uh, it was awesome. So if you didn't get a chance to listen to her flow and to listen to her, what she had to say, like go find it. I think her name is Amanda Gorman and check this out. Just found out she's a SOS major. She's a SOS major. She, oh yeah, yeah, that's right. Harvard Soch major. Mm -hmm. I mean, maybe that's why I'm wearing a tie. I have no idea today, but uh, I do know that that is the coolest, cool. Yeah, Harvard, for sure. Absolutely. And for as much of a flow as she had, she had a speech impediment for a long, long time as well. And anyway, um, you know, when you see somebody who's got it and you've not seen that person before, she's got it. She's going to be like a force in art and, and our culture for a long time. I love that. I remember the first time I saw Lizzo <laughs> and, I, and it was early on when a lot of people didn't know who Lizzo was. And I was like, second, I was like, yes, yes, yes. She's like Madonna, but now like, so anyway, love, I love it when I feel like artistic forces of nature, things of that nature. Okay. So let's talk. Um, how big has the last 24 hours been compared to how depressing it's been for a while. I mean, honestly, I've been teaching this class for years and years and years. Who, go ahead, you step up to the plate. What has happened in the last 24 hours that directly applies to this class, okay? And don't talk to me about politics because this is what's happening that relates to the environment and whether things get done or whether they don't, okay? Now, what happened? Because two, at least two tremendous things. Uh, We're back in the Paris climate agreement. We are back in the Paris climate accord. Yes. Now, I mean, does that mean that the world is saved? Hell no, it does not. And that's not even just a no, that's a, a hell no. Um, but it's a start. And for us to have such a big impact, we use so many more resources than the rest of the world per country and per capita, you name it, we'll talk about this this semester. For us not to be a part of that, means that other people aren't gonna be a part of that. And it means that the whole thing slows down. So that is huge. And of course, there's big work to be done, right? Um, okay, uh, I did not see that we're pulling drilling out of national parks yet, um, but I would, I would like to see that. Yes, we definitely joined the WHO again, um, but, but not the WHO, not like, you better, you better, you better, you know, that, that or my generation, or that, different. Um, yes. But I want to hear it. I don't just want to read it. Tell me the other thing. Tell me the other thing. The Who's going to tell me? Wait, I hear somebody trying, but your mic is really low. <laughs> the Biden signed to halt the Keystone Pipeline. Yeah, not just help the Keystone Pipeline, but rescind the permits, effectively ending that project. Now, let's talk about this. I mean, how many Native peoples and people that joined those people we're tear gassed and rubber bulleted and frozen water. And we're talking about on sovereign land that is not, it does not belong to the people who want to run the pipeline through. That's one thing. But here's another thing. I'm a practical guy and I'm a very pragmatic guy. I know I might not seem like it at first, but I am. I am very conservative with my money, very liberal with my mayonnaise and ranch dressing. All right. So I am a combination of many things in this life. But I'll tell you what, when it comes, to the environment, there are so many things that are just practical, like plastic bags at the store. If you put more than one spaghetti sauce in there, you have an emergency on your hands. It's gonna rip through. So it's not that because of hippy dippy reasons, I want like better cloth bags that are reusable. I want it because what you have in place is not only wastes a lot of oil and cause a lot of pollution, but they just don't work, right? That's practical. If it works, fine, if it doesn't. So Keystone, bought their pipes from a company, I want to say in Europe or Canada, that had already had spills and leakages in those places. They knew these pipes were going to fail. They bought them because they were cheap. Look, we're not going to break down capitalism in this environmental sociology class. I'm not interested in that. But they bought pipes that they knew would burst. And guess what happened? Everybody said they would. Now, fast forward a couple of years, what happened? They burst to the tune of millions of gallons of oil spilled. It wasn't that native people have like extrasensory foresight 
It's not that people who are activists had the same thing. You can look at where you bought the material. If you buy your bike at a place like Sam's Club or Walmart, or you go to a specialty bike store and buy a nice bike, I'm going to tell you which one you're going to be stuck on the side of the road someday with. You know this. We all know this to be true. Um, well, I was talking with the CEO of Patagonia years ago when he was in town giving a speech. And he said, yeah, we've moved a lot of our production to other countries, but only because we were finding so many flaws in the American made climbing clips and hooks that I had to send it to someplace where they were being made better. People are climbing with this gear. They're going to die if it's not made well. So from a very practical sense, this was a failure from the start. And this is a very, very big step. Also, if we're going to talk about it and we should, but we won't today, but in regards to reparations and treating native peoples and giving them the respect that they deserve that they still don't get. Um, so real easy to shoot tear gas and rubber bullets at brown folks. We know that that is not the case when it comes to people in dominant culture. We just saw that two weeks ago. So within 24 hours, I think that there has been uh, some awesome stuff and forget all the political stuff, but just things that will make, changes that will make an impact on our environment. I'm not on a soapbox. This is very practical, very important for us to be involved in these climate accords. And look, I'm also the person that is going to say, Obama did not do enough for food, the dark act and protecting food integrity. There are all sorts of things that each administration fails at, I think, in regards to the environment and protecting us and being transparent. So these are good steps. And again, very practical sense, not at all a political sense. Um, so fantastic. Um, if we are pulling out of drilling in national parks, which I would hope, um, of course, it's been going back and supported by both parties for the longest of times to preserve these places. Um, that would be fantastic too. <clears throat> okay, um, I wanna start off here real quick with any questions. Um, I've never looked at myself so much in a tie in so many years before. It's, it's kind of ridiculous that I have to actually see myself while I'm doing it. I'd much rather see you. And by the way, Andy, hanging out with Guardians of the Galaxies today. Fantastic. Give that raccoon a scratch for me. I'm one of those people that break down crying at the end of every single Disney movie. Just give me a CGI tree and some Cat Stevens music and I'm bawling. I'm doing it. So I like you representing us out in space, brother. Okay. Any questions about this class? What do we got going on? Anybody? I'll pause for a second. I probably should. Jason, what's in that jar? It's too early in the semester to talk about that. I had a brief question about Top Hat. Yes, Natasha. Um, so You will look at that today too. Sorry to interrupt, but. Cool. I, I just wanted to know, are all of them going to be posted before kind of like they were this time or is it going to be like in class? Interacting? It will always be before. Yep. Okay, cool. But while you're in class, if we haven't gotten to a question, look, let's be realistic. I don't know how many windows you have open right now. You could be purchasing something from Lowe's, hanging out with your homies on Twitter. I don't know. But, but if we're in class and you want to open up that window and participate, if you're like, oh, it'll definitely be open through the day that I do it. This time I opened it up like through Monday, which is ridiculous because past some of these questions today, right? Past me lecturing, we, we may get to some of that data or we may get past that. I'm keeping it open a little longer than I would normally. I normally only keep it open the day, the morning of that we have class or the day before through that day. Because I want most of our data collected so that we can talk about it in class. Yeah. So, uh, and this time there's some old folders there, but I am just, by the class period or the due date, I am naming the folder. Should be easy for people to find. Um, so did everybody, I see, I see that we got a lot of, you know, a lot of replies here and, and we're gonna look at some of that stuff today kind of right off the bat. Yeah, and I can actually see it adding in real time. So people are answering even right now in the last few minutes. Um, okay, any more questions? I know this is new and I was going at a pretty fast pace the other day. Um, some of your teachers probably just jumped into lecturing right away. Uh, but I want to make sure everybody's comfortable with what's going on. Any more questions um, before we cruise? We're only 10 minutes into this class, so we're good. Any more? Uh, I've got one about the extra credit. Yep, Noah. Um, it's, it was the, the food donation. Yep. Um, it said something about, like, adding a discussion oh is there not an extra credit discussion board post for it i don't think so okay yeah i could that. just 
I could have just missed it, but I was just like, I don't know where I'm supposed to do that. Yeah, or, yeah. Uh, usually the link goes from the announcements to the discussion board post. So let me look here because uh, I could do this right now. Sometimes the internet's slow out here, but uh, okay. So just, oops, discussions. And let's see. Yep, one of them says extra credit food donation. So go to the discussion oh. tab, scroll down. You'll find it May 4th when you click on that then you'll see the link. And it's the direct link to this class. I've got six classes maybe on there and we're all raising money, which means it's not just your responsibility to get $5,000 at five bucks a piece, that wouldn't even happen. Um, but it's like six classes in on it, plus two in Boulder. But I really don't count Boulder because it's Boulder. Oh, that's right. Lived in Colorado long enough to, it, yeah, this is CSU. That's, it's really not about me hating Boulder so much as it is loving CSU. I'll take one for the team in, in that respect. Sorry if anybody's from Boulder. Uh, all right. Okay. Jason, tell me, uh, tell them how much Boulder raised last semester. To be fair, if it sounds like somebody's in my class, to be fair, it was only a couple hundred bucks and it was only one class. Literal. Okay. It was literally nothing. Maybe um, <laughs> I'm reading the comments, but I was asking them to donate to our food bank in our County. So now I've, I'm hooked up with a really cool helping pantry out down there. And I'm, I'm hoping that motivates people down there that yes, we, yep. Yeah, yeah. That doesn't say anything about the quality of people down there. They're good human beings as well. It's just that you're a better human. Being? No, no, no. All right. All right. Uh, Jason, what's his band called? All right. Let's get to class business. If we don't have any more class questions, um, then let me roll over here. <clears throat> Actually, I think I want to go to the zoom thing first. So let me go ahead and I'm not going to screen share this. I'm just going to read them. Okay. So we'll start off with our first question of the semester. If I'm reading this now and you're like, yeah, but I didn't click in yet. These questions are open till Monday. Um, so don't worry about it this first round. Okay. Uh, and again, if you ever have problems with Top Hat, we'll figure it out. We'll contact them or, you know, if it doesn't work for you, it's, it's none of that. This is all for, for, to get good data about our class in real time, not uh, to worry about. So it's not like an extra stressor, even if it doesn't work for you someday, that's it's not a problem. Okay, so the question is, oh, we've got 81 people. So yeah, uh, some folks since I've been here, uh, just uh, since we've clicked in have answered. So let's read it. Describe our environment in one word. Now, because this is a sociology class, I think it's really important to find out where we're coming from. Like, like I said uh, the other day, what is your relationship with the environment? You know, what are our connectivity pieces? Where are we not getting connected? How does that play itself into policy formation and transformation? Um, so where are we at with the environment? So I'm just going to read it down here. All right. Um, describe uh, the environment in one word. Dying is the first one with four. Um, and fragile four, beautiful three, declining, three, two, endangered, cha uh, changing, troubled, diverse, unique, polluted, connections, undiscovered, disaster, threatened, concerning, downhill, healthy, compared to other places, livelihood, vulnerable, complicated, depleted, dry, bruised, essential, degraded, resourceful, fixable, fragile, or adaptable, crippling, complex, crumbling, wrecked, toasty, Hmm. Dirty, invaluable, uh, hurting, water, persistent, overloaded, plummeting, decay, chaotic, life, dynamic, fascinating, industrious. All right. Wow. Okay. Um, so I'm going to turn it over to uh, all of you for a second. Uh, and this is kind of how I do class. Um, make some observations. This is sociology. Okay. Uh, so we just constructed a list with over 80 responses. Now it's our turn to process them. And what we're going to do this semester is really learn a whole bunch of different sociological lenses through which you will come to see culture, right? So that you can understand it from different perspectives. You, of course, you understand your own perspective, but we need to be able to understand things from other people's perspectives, particularly if you want to do something positive for the environment, right? Okay. So make some observations. I'm going to be quiet now. What do you think? about that list, anybody? I guess I'll go first. Uh, very, uh, I guess, pessimistic. <laughs> a lot of negative terminology I noticed in that. Uh, I mean, not without bad reason, just something I noticed. Yeah, no, yeah, for sure. Not, I mean, with much reason, in fact, right? 
um, enough so to where that's maybe the first thing that came to somebody's mind. Um, and there is, there's quite a, it's quite an intense list uh, right out of the gate. Uh, so other observations. Going off of that, I think there's a really big theme. I, I, it's just the same. It's most every word has something negative to do with our environment. So there's definitely like a big theme. Okay. All right. So yeah, there's 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 this in, in, intensely. I mean, we can, negative, you know, sort of connectivity. Um, now there are things like dynamic and fascinating, which I think is cool. Like, but those really stand out, don't they? You know. It's like heavy, 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 yeah, heavy, heavy, he oh, heavy, heavier, heavy. yeah, heavy, right, <laughs> you know, and, and so, yeah, the, the web is connected with a lot of concerning things. Doesn't seem like there's a lot of positive hope. Perhaps, perhaps, we're going to get to another question that I asked that I think is essential. This is really just, you know, what are we seeing? Why, why did you choose the word that you chose? Like, whoever, any of you. I just I wonder if the more optimistic and like the more cheerful descriptions were by people who spend more time outside of nature and the more pessimistic were from people who spend more time hearing about the negative things going on than about actually spending time in nature. Uh, I don't know, but that's why I love sociology, right? Because that's one of the first things that came came to my mind too. Like, okay, is this is this somehow connected to the time that people spend in our natural world? Yeah, great, awesome. Um, yeah, I said uh, beautiful, and I just came back from skiing for two weeks, pretty much. So maybe that kind of connects to your <laughs> theme there. <laughs> All right. But, uh, yeah, I said beautiful because we gotta protect, you know, what it what we have. Are you from Chicago, Jack? Yep. I noticed your flag in the background. Right on, man. Go Bulls. Go Bears. I saw the best. Hey, if you haven't been enjoying, I don't care if you like them or not. If you haven't been enjoying the Bernie Sanders memes today, you have not been enjoying life. Oh, I love to see everybody's faces. I have to say this just because because uh, you spoke up, Jack, and I saw the Chicago flag in the background. I saw one of the 85 Bears hoisting Bernie up with his mittens instead of the Bears, instead of Ditka. It was it was classic. I, do you see the one of Bernie and Wu-Tang? <laughs> that might that might be my favorite one that might be my favorite one anyway i guess i have to digress for a minute and say that my partner's from minnesota and for many years she has praised the value of a man who knows the value of good mittens uh and so today she feels somewhat vindicated and supported by, by the internet because of uh, bernie's dedication to staying warm <laughs> Oh, so many good memes today. Yeah, I can't even, there's one of him sitting at the bar with the big Lebowski. So good. All right, all right. So why else did you choose the word that you chose? So we've already, I mean, we've already got kind of a support for that maybe. Wow, I just spent two weeks out doing things outside and th this was my word. What was your word and why did you choose it? Um, I can jump in. I use the word vulnerable and kind of like what Haley and Jack mentioned, I am very outdoorsy, like I love being outdoors, but I'm also an environmental engineering major and a conservation biology minor. So I interact with my professors a lot about the problems that we're facing, but at the same time, I love the outdoors. So I think my word I use to bring awareness to everything that's going on, just because um, even the slightest increase in global temperatures can have extremely damaging effects on especially ocean environments. And I think even though it is beautiful and just very diverse, there are little changes that can have huge impacts. Awesome. Good. And, and correct. You know, we'll talk about, I mean, you raise the temperature half a degree and you are talking about a lot of changes um, and, you know, in the ocean and in what can live and survive on land. You know, like, you know, if polio or other diseases make a comeback because of that too. And so, yeah, there's a many, many, many repercussions of something like that. So good. Uh, I chose the word undiscovered because I think there's so many cool things we don't know about the environment. So it can be hard just to put one word. Actually, undiscovered is one of the words that stood out to me. Uh, am I the only one, right, that, that when you hear the word undiscovered with the environment, you automatically think depths of the ocean? I mean, I don't, I don't know. When, when I read that, the first thing I thought was, was, ooh, I don't know what's in the, you know, we don't know what's in the ocean still. Um, 
and I'm just a huge fan of dinosaurs ever since I was a little kid because my grandpa and grandma lived in Evergreen. So they would send me dinosaur bones and fossils and all sorts of cool stuff from Colorado. I've been connected, you know, with Colorado, it seems like forever. But but yes, I think of the ocean when I think of that. Um, essential, because we all know it depends on it. Absolutely. And, and really, I don't think politics should have anything to do with any of this. I, if you really want to know where I stand, I think it's ridiculous. As human beings, I get it. But what is, we all need clean air to drink and clean water to breathe and some food to eat. Beyond that, that's got to be one of our driving interests in protecting the earth. This is it. I know every once in a while they're like, they found a new planet that's just like earth. Every time they say that, I cringe, the cringiest cringe, worse than the cringer, right? I mean, honestly, like, because that makes me feel like people just crumple up a piece of garbage and they're like, oh, okay, I don't need to worry about this planet anymore. We've got another one. But the one thing I guarantee my 220 students every single semester is this. You know what? You know how much I love Star Wars. I could touch so many Star Wars things right now just within my reach. I would love to travel on a spaceship, but that ain't happening for me and it ain't happening for you in your lifetime. We are not getting to another planet. This is as much planet as we have, right? So in that... I mean, and you know, I, I pull for that. I want light speed. I want, I want hyperspace. I want all of that. Uh, nope, not going to happen. I want to meet baby Yodas. Mm -mm, nope, not going to happen. So we have to understand that, yeah, essential. This is, this is it and hardly a, a political thing. And you have to be reminded if you are in your teens or your 20s or whatever, when Nixon, right, helped create the EPA and when uh, Republicans and Democrats work side by side. My grandpa was a staunch Republican who was so conservative, he cut his own benefits as president of a bank. That's conservatism. And those people wanted to conserve the environment too. So I grew up with people working on either sides of the aisle, whatever like horrible, tragic thing it's morphed into, where we expect every Democrat to care about the environment and zero Republicans, that doesn't make any sense. None of these things are political concerns deep in this because we all need this earth, this planet to survive. And that's not hippie, that's science, right? Like, like you, have, you have to have certain things. And water, let me just say this at the beginning of the semester, we have less than 1% of the world's water is fresh water and is drinkable. Surrounded by three fourths of a planet of water, we're running out. And so, you know, essential is a good one. Sorry, I'm kind of getting stuck on that, but that seems really important to me. Um, okay, anything else here? Um, anything uh, as far as like the words you chose and why? So I did changing, but I also come from a biology background, but I'm taking a minor in global sustainability. But the reason why I say changing is just because that's, I, what's happening right now is not normal, but the world is constantly changing. Like the one thing that you'll expect to never change is change. Um, you know, like nothing's going to be the same as it was 50 years ago. But at the same time, we need to acknowledge this and try to like do difference for the better, I guess is the best way to put it. So my yeah. biology brain immediately just kind of like <laughs> to that. Uh, that's why I love looking at these, uh, any class through a sociological lens because everybody here has in like each one of these little boxes or whatever has so many different backgrounds, right? You know, like seeing things from a biological perspective or an art perspective or a, you know, whatever, sports therapy perspective, dynamic, yeah. The Colorado River doesn't reach the ocean anymore. Yep, yep. Uh, and water rights and our water in Colorado. I mean, the chapter on water is mind blowing and awesome. And I just, I can only begin to do it. I think the social department offers, somebody teaches a whole course on that. So we will talk about that though this semester because it's pretty important. Um, anybody else here want to jump in on why they chose what they chose before I start into the lecture? Um, I chose Troubled because I was driving past um, Alt the other day and the landfill there had basically all the curtains that normally keep the trash had been completely destroyed. And so there were like hundreds and hundreds of trash bags that were like strewn all the way across the road and stuck in trees and all over people's farmland and everything like that. So that was really hard to see because um, it seems like such a simple thing to be able to fix and just like keep your keep your sheets up to keep all the garbage in the landfill but it's not so <laughs> yeah it's yep we'll talk about that because uh this semester as well we you know we've effectively run out of space in the larimer county landfill 
um, and as they look for new locations and maybe they, they might have one and things like that, but, but, uh, no, normally landfills are something that are concerned for social justice. Usually they're in rural places, places where people of color reside. Um, and those have, you know, impacts and externalities in those, those places, but yep, that is difficult to see. All right, good. Um, well, let me uh, go ahead and screen share here and let's see what we can do. Start in a bit with, um, with chapter one. And give me a thumbs up if you could see that. Is that going good? Okay, good. Um, oh, the Sustainable Living Fair. For a long, 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 long time, Fort Collins had the biggest, most awesome, incredible Sustainable Living Association and Sustainable Living Fair that happened every year. And I mean, that's where I got to talk to and interview the guy who owns Patagonia, you name it. But they brought in some really amazing people that it doesn't take place here anymore, but but you still have so much happening in this community um, that is out there. Uh, the guy in the bottom, we're going to look at that. Uh, has anybody ever seen Garbage Warrior before? Fantastic film about Michael Reynolds. He's an architect that builds earthships. Show of hands. Anybody heard of an earthship? We will talk about alternate building and architecture this semester. And there are some earthships in Larimer County that are really cool too. Um, but anyway, individuals, societies, and pragmatic environmentalism. Really, you know, what does sociology have to do with today's environmental problems, concerns, and goals? Uh, I would say sociology has everything to do with it, right? Um, where people are and where nature and that intersect is pretty much everywhere now. Um, this is an older video. I'm not sure if this, this link still works, but you can check it out. This is years ago when the Standing Rock uh, tribe was fighting the pipeline and, and, and allies of, of those folks. And like I said, a pretty violent, um, you know, situation there. And yet um, not much intervention by the federal government, uh, not a whole lot done, reversed over the last several years. And here we wind up years and years later uh, with that project basically being nullified. So, okay, this is gonna speak to all of us here. And the first question is, or second question, I guess, but it connects right to that first, which is how are issues regarding the environment framed most often in your opinion? Now, I'm gonna stop the share for a minute, come back to this, and I'm gonna say this, I have not looked at this top hat question, but but let's, let's let me say, I'm, I'm just, that's all I'm gonna say. That's all I'm gonna say. All right, here we go, here we go. Let me escape here. Find it. Uh, how are issues regarding the environment? Oh, oh, oh. All right, all right. Whew. Uh, I had looked like yesterday and we were at like 70 to zero or something like that. Okay, so it, which, which by the way, when I start to break down these polls, we will almost never, almost never get 80 to zero, right? I mean, we, if that ever happens, that's an, that's an intense amount, right? 100% of agreement with all people in this class. So it doesn't happen very often. I was wondering if that was gonna happen to this. How are issues regarding the environment framed most often in your opinion? Uh, a, as solutions, five people said that. And problems, uh, B, 76 people said that. So, wow, that's, that's a, a, a really high level of agreement. Um, that things are negative. And we know from what we just said that that seems to be true. Um, why do you think this is? Just because we are so aware of, of the challenges that face us? All right, well, we'll get, we kind of touched on that, but let's get to this next one. Hey, it's all unicorns and rainbows. Um, are there problematic ecological conditions that surround us? This is as neutral of a question as I could possibly, I think, ever pose uh, a group of individuals. Um, so let me see here. Um, what's Top Hat say? Uh, up here. Are there, oh yeah, we had 81. Whoa, okay, here we go. I might as well, I suppose I'll screen share this. I suppose, wow, I, I, I don't know, we might, this might be a first for this class. Uh, there we go, check it out. Um, 81 to zero, are there problematic ecological conditions that surround us? Okay, okay, that's, I mean, now we're getting into a point, like I said, that rarely, rarely ever happens during the course of a semester. So I guess, I guess, hmm, that's interesting. My question to you is, 
uh, as I screen share this again, who is left to convince then and why? And that's my question for you live right now. What do you think? Who's who? If if we're at 80, now normally that's a setup question. I know we get high levels of agreement. I don't think in the last few semesters it's been everybody. I mean, if I was in this class, I would have just pressed the other thing just to press the other thing, just to be a nonconformist, right? Like there's, there's a handful of existential people that will answer these questions and I'll have A, B, C, and C will be blank and they'll still answer C, right? It's like, what is, so what do you think? Why, who is left to convince and why? Now I know this is a class about the environment and we are, you know, in very, 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 we, a lot of people look, have an interest in our natural world because you're in this class to begin with. But what do you think? I mean, nobody in this class is left to convince, but policy's not moving that fast. So there must be a whole lot of people left to convince. So what do you think? I'm, I'll let somebody come in with the mic. I'm not gonna, I, I've read these, but go ahead. What do you think? I'm saying, um, like big corporations and like big oil and all of that because they like they can definitely see it's there but deny it just because of the profits they make sure and I wouldn't want us to not be able to back this up and I believe that within the last year Exxon people that worked in Exxon over the last 30 years were interviewed and I'm not interviewed, they were deposed or uh, they were in a court of law and they answered these questions and they said, yes, for the last 30, 40 years, we have been purposefully misleading the public about the dangers of drilling and oil spills. And yeah, so it's, this is not a conspiracy thing. And I know how into that people seem to be in 2021. I have no idea why, but, but it is factual from people that worked at those companies. And of course, then we ask ourselves why. In sociology, I don't, everybody, I call this a bumper sticker culture. It's like, uh, I hate Obama, beep, beep, or don't like Trump, beep, beep, or do, and then it's like, see you later. No, I don't, I don't want to know that. I want to know why. And all semester long, we're going to want to get to the why. So why for big corporations? Why would they be hard to, because billions of dollars in taxes that they might have or cleanup that they might have or responsibility. These companies don't run very transparently to their, through their own admission and how that works. And a lot of these places don't. The CAFOs in Greeley, they have sued places like that, meat processing places, so that you can't photograph those places. If you do and they catch you or they find that footage, they will sue you and there's already precedent for that. That speaks to the lack of transparency in many of these um, industries or whatever. Okay, so why else? So big corporations might be left to convince. We get that. They're polluters. Who else? I think that um, since science technology has progressed so far in the last 20 or 30 years, uh, it's, you know, been exponential. I think a lot of older people um, that are more traditional are sort of distrusting of this technology. And so they're kind of suspicious about whether facts about the, our changing environment are real unless they have physical evidence in front of them. Right. Okay. Yeah. And I mean, look, we're in an era where physical evidence, even if you have it, people are like, yeah, well, <laughs> right? Like, like, and there's so many examples to use, but, but oftentimes we try and turn away from that as well. I was reading this on the right. Leanne, would you be willing to speak to that uh, to, or to say what you said, what you typed here? If not, that's cool. Sorry, I was just, wasn't, wasn't unmuting right away. No, no, you're good. Um, I know, like, I can, like, in my family, I think you're getting, unwilling I think you're getting some like, lag. Sorry. I'm sure there's many other people like that as well. Okay. So basically, I, I don't want to say this, but are we lazy? You know, because we come to this oftentimes in this class. It's like, People are just. Where'd he, where'd he go? Yeah, he's back. Yes. Is he, is he lost? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, my God. I, I, oh, I there, he there, there he is. There he is. There he is. I think there are some internet problem in his he's, home. No, nah, he's yeah. just muted. I found him. Oh. Jason, you're muted. What? 
Thank you. I got you. I got you. <laughs> Did you see me here? Like, yes. Oh, yeah, yeah. you're good now. You. Yeah. It's like, I'm like, yo, I got no connection. <laughs> I live in Laporte. And once in a while, this is really only the second time that's ever happened where, uh, where it just got booted. But then Julie's like, everybody's panicking in the house. Zion's like, I'm not on the internet. People, children, teenagers confessing in the house. All right. Sorry about that. Can you hear me and everything? Yep. Okay, great. All right. Um, funny. <laughs> Sorry about that. I just dropped my laptop. Um, okay. So yeah, um, changing what we do is really difficult. Do you know what I mean? Like, like actually changing our behavior. And that's what we were talking about really in this class. Like, how do you get these pragmatic behavior changes if people just don't want to do them or if they're lazy or something like that or for feeling that way? Okay. Uh, anybody else? I think a part of it too is that there's a lot of like that sentiment that one person can't make a change that can actually like impact the environment. And so I think that a big thing is just showing people that there is something they can do to contribute. So specifically, I know a lot of people that are not really willing to give up meat like at all. Like they don't want to live without it. I asked so, that question too, didn't I? Yeah. So if you just like show them like one thing different, you know, like using a reusable bag instead of getting plastic at the grocery store, like small things like that, even, even if they aren't willing to totally change their entire life, just the small things can really add up. Uh, absolutely. And now we're getting to like the biggest, your great segue, by the way, what's, hey, hold on. Great segue, Ryan. Great segue. Um, yeah. And I mean, okay. That's too much of a segue. I'm going straight to the question. So that brings us to the next question, but let me screen share this real quick. Um, okay, here we are, right? You can see the headlines, right? What liberals get wrong on climate change? Should you trust climate science? Maybe the eclipse is a clue. Uh, sorry, climate change costs $10 billion. President Trump has been a federal panel. Uh, renewable energy isn't just cutting costs and saving lives. The Republicans trying to fight climate denial in their own party. One of the reasons that we resist these ideas is because there's so many conflicting messages, right? That's coming through. Why are so many people resisting masks right now? Well, because there hasn't been a bold step up to say, just wear it, do the right thing for everybody and make it that way. If you look back at World War II, you should see how many propaganda posters were like, eat your dinner, clean your plate. It's unpatriotic if you don't ration your food. Right. So anyway, one of the ways that we get this behavior across is by showing people that it can be done and that it's possible. Okay. So the question is, and I'm really excited about this one, because this is to me, one of the biggest questions in the class I will ask the whole time. And that is, do, or just, do you feel like fixing the environment is possible? All right. I had 80 people chime in on this. And I know it's vague. I do that to you on purpose all semester long. Get used to it. Uh, all right. So do you feel like fixing the environment is possible? All right. So this is a gauge for me every semester right out of the gates about students. Okay. And about society and about what Ryan was just saying. So here we go. Answers are A, definitely possible. B, maybe in my lifetime or nah, son. I don't know. Anyway. All right. So a definitely possible 25 people. Yes. We know that 80 people answered. We're getting there. Maybe in my lifetime, another 53 people. Okay. So that's 78 people out of 80. Oh, excuse me. No way. Out of 83. It's my son. That's the math guy. And then nah, son, that's five people. Now I'm going to turn this over to you. Why is this the most important question that I ask? How does it relate with what we were just talking about? And what, like, why do I, why am I so excited about this question <laughs> or think that it's so important? And what do you think? Go ahead. Uh, because if we don't think change is possible, we're not gonna do anything to make the plan. Like, like if I didn't think change was possible, I would use plastic willy nilly. I would, you know, do whatever I wanted without regard like with no regard to how it could affect because if it's not going to get better then what's the point in trying ding 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 right and i think most of us here kind of get that but really 
if we don't, as human beings, if we don't think something is possible, we likely won't try to accomplish it. You know, if it's, if, it, if we just think that's, mm, no, can't do it, then we won't. If we're talking about fixing the environment or saving our world or contributing positively in any of those ways, and we're just like, we can't, then we have crossed some kind of important sociological cultural milestone, right, as human beings. But we have not. Semester after semester after semester, and even, I would say, as bizarre as it seems that we would have more positive attitudes this semester, like immediately, which I don't think is the case, but there's a lot of people here, more so maybe than last semester at least, that said between yes and maybe. And I think that if we're still at 78 people saying yeah, and yeah, that's my partners from Minnesota. If we have 78 people saying, yeah, hey, let's go down and cut a fish in uh, Lake Malax and do some ice fishing, and then we'll get a little hot dish from Margie. Uh, sorry, I had to resort back to my Minnesota roots. If we have that many people that are saying it's possible, then I do believe as human beings, we will continue to work towards that. Now, that seems important to be me moving forward in this course, right? Moving forward this semester, um, because why bother? I mean, like at a certain point, if we, if we are feeling like that's not the case, then we're on the backside of that hill. I'm hoping that we are still on the front side of that hill, or at least up at the top somewhere where, where we can rein in things. And as we'll find out this semester, because we're not going to be so obsessed with the problems, we will find that there are an incredible amount of solutions that need uh, maybe traction or backing or more people to know about them or whatever it is. But these things, these solutions, I do believe they're out there. Um, why did you answer the way that you answered? And maybe just a few people, I'm interested in that. Yeah, um, I said maybe because in my opinion, there's a lot of like performative action that I've seen. Like for example, the Paris Climate Accord, if you read what it says, it doesn't actually hold our country accountable it just kind of says like we're gonna try so i feel like there needs to be like real policy making change for for me to want to say like yes it's definitely possible i think there needs to be more like decisive action you know what i'm saying i do know what you're saying yeah and i'm not one of those folks that's like yeah you know we got back in paris everything's good because i want more right we can do more that being said how pathetic is it that we just said we're not even going to try for the last several yeah, years? Like, like that is that is really the bottom of the barrel effort right there. So let's put ourselves. Uh, yeah, what you're saying, man. And uh, excuse me, what you're saying, and I, Mason, I think this is great. Is that at least we're back into we're willing to try status, right? <laughs> which yeah, yeah. which seems like a better place to be than effort. You know, at least I think that's a little bit better place to be. Okay. Uh, why else did you choose what you chose? I, I agree with Mason. I said maybe too. Um, I think the United States, I think everyone is possibly be on the same page, everyone working towards climate change goals, but holding other countries accountable like China and, and India, I think that might be a harder thing that might not happen in our lifetime, potentially. Okay, so bringing in a bit of the global perspective, which is going to be essential for us this semester, right? So even if we got it together here, and we're not the best team player, right? America's not the best team player. Look, I, I love this country, but historically, working with other countries that are with, like the Kyoto Treaty, nope, didn't want to do that one. So many throughout time, we're not the best at playing with others. If we can get there, we also now have to Go to the rest of the world and ask them to be good at right playing with others. So, or or moving towards that. And again, these are very concrete types of goals that we sort of fluff around a little bit, right? Well, maybe that's not quite here. And no, oh, this is good, but then we water it down a bit. Let me say this because this is our really our first lecture and second meeting. And I and I will stand on this hard. That is to all the people out there that find themselves really feeling conservatively towards money issues. That's me, that's my grandpa, that's a lot of people out there. There is no investment that we can make in the environment that won't pay off as long as we are doing it before time, right? We cut funds, we didn't build the levees up. Oh, we said that for years and years and years. Katrina happens, it costs you a billion more dollars. We will run and look at this semester economic models that should get everybody on board.
from the staunchest, if you actually are a conservative that actually wants to conserve, this is for you, right? If you're a person that loves the environment, you just want it to get better, this is for you. By putting money into it, instead of reacting to it, you will save it. But yeah, you're going to have to put $10 trillion into it. I mean, you put $10 trillion to a whole lot of other stuff that doesn't do a lot of good. Saving our asses with $10 trillion, I don't think is a very bold thing to say or expect. So yeah, I do believe that it is important for us to talk about economic models of success and investments because we do live in a capitalist culture and we have to understand that some of those political decisions are made that way. I'm not rallying against capitalism. I'm actually saying we have to understand the system that we're in so that we can appeal to the system and the people that make those decisions so that we can move forward. And I think appealing with the dollar is about the easiest way that we'd be able to do that. And so we'll look at that in, in almost every single chapter. And I think that that's a cool way that we can find allies. Because what I have found is that it seems like people are very polarized when it comes to the environment. And in this class, they're not. I have some very, very conservative students that vote always Republican or always conservative that are hunter people and fisher people and conservationists. And they know more about that than so many people who are considered to be liberal or environmentalists themselves. So I think this is a great platform for us to talk about it where we respect everybody's perspectives and can find common goals like the dollar, a bottom line, saving money and use that. And I guess I would caution and I always do my students against this notion that we think, because I asked who's left, right? Who's left to convince? And at that point it starts to sound like who's our enemies? Right? Who's for it and who's against it? But I would say that if we can keep our mind open by thinking sociologically, then the people that we thought might be our enemies against the environment are actually the people that are our allies. Um, because we all, again, it's the same. We all need to breathe clean air. Same. All need to drink clean water. Same. Need to be able to hunt and fish and enjoy the outdoors and ski. That's the same no matter what political party you're part of. So to me, I think a lot of awesome common ground in this class and a lot of ways for us to appeal to people. And then we have to know the system by which we're looking at trying to appeal to if we're going to make some kind of substantive changes, right? Okay. Anybody else before I get back to the lecture want to say why they chose what they chose? Um, I chose... Um... Did I say breathe clean water? <laughs> did I? I think so. Those are for all of my underwater folks out there. Like, I don't know, Admiral Akbar. Did I? <laughs> um, I said yes, it is possible mostly because I'm coming from a, um, a zoology background as well as a conservation bio background. And um, there's like the research is out there that shows it is entirely possible to prevent and to somewhat partially reverse the climate change that has. Oh, thank you. Yeah, this is lucky. Um, <laughs> Sorry, he was out of the cage. Um, but the research is out there that shows that it is entirely possible to reverse and prevent further damage from occurring if we just take the proper steps now. And they're very simple ones in terms of what we need to do. Yeah, they are. And I just want to say before when students had to used to like stare, and I don't want to be rude here, but stare at their crotch, which is what you do while you're texting in class, you're basically looking at your crotch and smiling. And I would notice that as a teacher, but now there are so many better distractions that we have. Dogs, birds sitting on our shoulder. I was reading this thing and somebody's like, like your bird, oh my, OMG. And I'm like, what bird? I'm looking at all the boxes and the person talking has like a bird on them. Yeah, yeah. We, I mean, we've got Taylor down here hanging out with Bernie. She's at the inauguration. I mean, to, to me, if we're gonna have to be from distance, we should have some, we should have some fun with it, everybody. So yeah. Um, I do believe you're right. So I didn't want to distract from what from what you were saying, but I think everybody was, your bird's now a thing. He's now like a Zoom class king or something like that. So, uh, all, right, all right, good. Uh, what's the bird's name? Uh, his name is Lucky. Lucky, okay. Well, there we go, 2021, good. All right, so let me get back here. I'm gonna screen share this. Um, <laughs> so many, So many fun things, really. I mean, I don't prefer Zoom. I prefer to see everybody in person and play loud music and see everybody's smiles and bust people for staring at their crotch with their cell phones and laughing. But we've got uh, we've got an adjustment to be made. All right. So, do you feel like fixing the environment? Here we go. Okay. So this is the way right here that I want to um, <clears throat> look at all things this this semester. So write this down. This is a definition that will be on the exam. If that helps. I don't know, but you know, we're going to be looking at things this semester. I may have mentioned it already from a pragmatic viewpoint, right? Like I said, having a 
cool satellite refracting enough heat and light from the earth to slow down global warming. I mean, that's awesome, but not going to happen right now. Uh, and if it does, that's fine. But I want us to be able to look at things that are tangible, because just like somebody was saying earlier in class, if we don't think that we can do it, then we won't. And somebody else said, and there's some pretty easy things we can do, right? So if you don't know the definition of pragmatic, which you probably do, but just dealing things uh, with things sensibly and realistically in a way that is based on practical rather than theoretical considerations. Do we need theoretical considerations to like reach the next milestone and make the next huge impact for our environment? We do. But we've also got to look around and say, you know, okay, hey, let me confide in you. You know what I hate? I really dislike. Oh, when I was growing up, I could brush my teeth and I never had to shut the water off. I really, it rubbed me the wrong way when somebody was like, you got to stop the water when you're brushing your teeth. Like, I know that sounds stupid, right? But that's those little easy changes. How many of you have a roommate that sleeps with a fan on all night or every light on in the house or the TV or the radio on like all the time? So it's like those little things. And so many of the things that would make a big impact um, are little, really. Okay. Uh, plant trees, you must. <laughs> uh, do you feel you are personally doing enough for the environment? All right, let's... Stop the screen share here and let me pop over to this. And we'll take a look at what people said. So uh, we know fixing it, we feel like it, but, but how are we split for this one? Do you feel like you're doing your part for the environment? 31 people out of 83 said yes, 47 said no, and five said, what's my part, right? So why did you answer the way that you answered? Because now we've talked about people's perceptions and politics and now let's get down to the real business. And the real business is, what are you going to do? But wait, I don't own a Fortune 500 company that pollutes billions of gallons of waste into the ground or into the ocean every year. What? Why is my responsibility to say, okay, right? You know where I'm headed with this. So why did you chose, choose what you did? Um, uh, yes, you're doing enough. No, you're not. You know, we're pretty evenly split with, with a handful more people saying, no, I'm not. I, I said I was doing, oh, okay. Um, I said I was doing enough, but I also feel like I'm not doing enough just because I think I'm doing everything that I personally can. But then again, like I don't have the ability to go and like take down Jeff Bezos or take down Elon Musk by myself and like donate all of their money to the environment and stuff like that. So I want to do more, but I don't know what else I can do. I assuming you're talking about kind of like a karate kid sweep the leg thing, right? <laughs> yeah. I'm going to take you down, Jeff. Sweep the leg. Don't do it, sensei. Uh, yeah. <laughs> shoot. Okay, who else? Why did you choose what you chose? I agree. Uh, oh, were you going to go, um, Riley? Um, yeah, so I think I spent like a lot of time like looking at this question and like defining what is enough. Um, for me personally, and I think that's like something that we should all be like constantly evolving of like what is enough and I don't think like for me I said no because um, I don't want to just be comfortable with where I'm at today I want to be always progressing and always doing that and like you said there's only a certain amount of things that we can control. Um, so I said no but I'd like to think that I'm doing I'd like to think that I am always going to be progressing and enough is always going to be changing for me. Good. Somebody, uh, somebody else said, I said no, because always uh, hard to live sustainably in an economy or society that's not made to be sustainable. Yeah. Look, how many times have I taught this class for years and there's tons of people that like serve, they wait tables and they're like, yeah, like we don't have a mechanism to recycle or I live in the dorms and it's, you know, it's it's not there so yeah we we can't just be sustainable geez we're going to talk about this semester what's that even mean right because i think that's important too rather than just throwing out terms out there right like we're green we're the greenest university things matter and that and that's important too right uh we don't necessarily live in a society that makes it easy to not waste um yeah and and i just answered that question to myself so i guess i should also say because this is only our second class meeting I own a four acre farm, I grow organic agriculture, la 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 la, sustainable living fair. Here's the deal. I'm not doing enough because last night, confession, confession. I threw out a peanut butter jar in the garbage because it was gonna be too much of a hassle to clean, right? There's, 
there's my confession. I knowingly took that piece of recyclable and looked at it and was like, mm, I, I voted no, nah, son, <laughs> for, for that last night. I did my own little like, no, no, no. So yeah, I mean, I can definitely, yeah, just, I just thought about that. And, and I know those are little things, but yeah, my answer would probably be no too, because I was just like, give the dog. I have a quick note about the peanut butter thing. Yeah, yeah. Um, if you have dogs and you're okay with them having a little bit of peanut butter, what I do is I give my dog the empty jar and let them lick it out. And then you can quickly just swirl it with water and then recycle it. And it is so much easier. And then you never have the like, oh, I don't want to clean the peanut butter jar out thing because I ate a ton of peanut butter. Uh, I'm going with that. That's like, of course. Yeah, I'm fine with my dogs having as much peanut butter as they want, except it's usually organic. So then they usually don't because that stuff's expensive. Hey, but if it's the end of it and I'm too lazy, definitely. I can see our Boston Terrier's head getting stuck in the peanut butter jar and that just being a wreck. But but I think I'm going to try that. That's that's a good idea. That's, that's it's super yeah. amusing to watch too. <laughs> I hate, uh, I don't like heavy internet stuff. So in my social media feed, I replaced it with like, pandas eating ice cream cones i could in a, in a swimming pool i could i could watch puppies all day long as long as i can like not have to always be so serious so watching a dog get peanut butter of a jar that's something i would do okay good okay awesome um anybody else why you chose you're doing enough why not or anybody thinking in bigger terms or smaller terms or local what do you think um, I chose that, uh, sorry if I interrupted anybody, <laughs> I'll be, I'll be quick. Um, I chose that I'm doing enough, even though I can obviously like personally do more, but I mentioned this before, I'm going into a field in which I'm going to be working my whole life to like fix these environmental issues. Um, so as an engineer, I'm going to be like, that's my goal to just fix some of these issues and help build a more sustainable future. So I think in that, the fact that I'm like committing my career to it, I think in that I'm doing enough, at least uh, compared to other people. <laughs> I love that. Awesome. Anybody else? Was there somebody else that was going to go? And Yeah, I was about to say something. I, I looked at the question. I thought, yeah, like I was doing my part at first, but then like, like I recycle and do all that stuff. But like I'm a big car guy too. And uh, my car can't pass emissions. So uh, <laughs> yeah, you know, probably not doing my part the greatest. And <laughs> probably... A lot of people probably don't think that's a good thing, but yeah, you know, thinking of it, no, I'm not doing a good job. <laughs> you know what? Like, I, I am happy that we are not past the point as human beings of critically looking at ourselves, yeah. you know, of like being able to take a look and be like, yeah, I can do better. See, I come from this magical time called the 70s and 80s, where people called you on your bullshit all the time. Parents, friends, matter of fact, that was like the, the hallmark of a good friend is somebody who would be like, yeah, you're not really, you could, you should probably change the way you're doing your whatever life. So I think that, um, good. Yeah. I like us to be uh, critical and reflective about it, but check it out. This is the thing also, cause it's like one of the first days of class, um, all semester long. And I say this with race too, because it's very true all semester long. This is about responsibility and not guilt. This is about not, look, the ocean is right now what it is on this day in 2021. And uh, the air is, and your recycling is or is not what it is on this day of 2021. So it's not about guilt that you feel because you know something's going on and you're not doing anything. It's about the responsibility that you're willing to take in the now. And, and so to me, if everybody said I'm not doing enough, that's not being hard on yourself. That's that's being a human being who can be critical and reflect on what, what you can do more of or, or whatever, right? So good, good. Um, I always like that. Anybody else? I was gonna say something. Um, so for example, like I have reusable nearly everything. Like I have cotton rounds and stuff that are reusable or paper towels. But the thing is, is it probably came from like a sweatshop or it came overseas and there's so much right. responsibility on the consumer and that's good. There should be responsibility there, but yep. obviously there needs to be initiative from the companies, like we were saying. So I didn't answer this. I just think that that's something I always think about is, you know, there's only so much you can do and <laughs> you can't always beat yourself up about it. Yeah. I mean, I bought my cotton rounds from China, but at least they last 10 years. I don't know. <laughs> right. So. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And that is something that I think my students for the last few years get much more than they ever did before. And that is that every time you vote, 
or every time you spend money, like a dollar, even ten, it's a vote. You're voting for something, right? So whatever it is, whatever that is, it could be the, the, the worst thing. It doesn't last very long and it's already done or the thing that pollutes the environment the most, or it can be something that you're trying to make an inroad on. That's why fair trade, what does that mean? How can they keep that robust organic? Well, how can that remain robust? I mean, you know, Sam's club sells more organic food than anybody. And yet, which is fantastic, right? They say, because they're so huge and yet they lobby to undermine the standards of organic food. So we have to constantly be like examining and re-examining that. Okay, Bubba, sorry, the Boston Terrier is lurking around. All right, so get back to this, the problem of individualism. I mean, you can each, we can each do our own things, um, but oftentimes, right, we, ref we act in ways that reflect our interests and our wants. You know, I mean, we live in a culture of consumption. That's not really an argue, uh, where sometimes we just buy things to make ourselves feel better. And, and, and nobody is sort of immune from that. So all of these ways that we interact with the environment, they're shaped by our world that we experience, right? Social world, political world, cultural world, technological advancements, you know, like our, our oh, recycling, reusing, uh, reducing, sorry, reduce, reuse, recycle. Yep. So the point of this though, and most sociology folks is that without collective action, we're not gonna make the same level of change. I mean, individuals are good, but the reality is collective social movements are an important part of what we examine in sociology. They're an important part of how people have changed the things in their society that they need to change, right? And, and for the better. So um, an organized social movement carries with it a lot of power. I know a lot of students in the past that are 18, 19, 20, 22 years old, and they're frustrated and they wanna change the world. And then I drop some old man thing on them like, well, change your local place first or whatever, right? But the reality is you have more power right now to change things on your campus. You have a vote. Do you wanna decide who gets the next food contract for CSU when that comes up? Is that important to you? How the, uh, you know, the, um, the composting program on campus and then in your community. And then when you have collective action, you take that to the next level, right? So very, 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 very important. And of course, you know, individuals can have a lot of impact, right? People protesting, uh, who's on the right? I'm just gonna ask because it's, she's so important. I wanna make sure you know. Rosa Parks. Thank you. And let's erase the narrative that Rosa accidentally sat down on the bus. She didn't. She was part of a housekeeper's uh, group that was resisting busing uh, discrimination. She did it on purpose. It wasn't just because she was tired. It was an organized social movement, but she's one person. But what about this, right? If one or two people can get things done, we know that collective action and a lot of people in their voices can get a lot more done. And dare I say, after the last two weeks, violence doesn't get people on your side. And I extend this not just to the Capitol riots, but if you're going to have a peaceful climate protest, why are you screaming? Right? You have to embody peace and you have to be peace if that's the message you want to get across. And if you use violence, it's likely to destroy your entire movement. And, and I, thankfully, I think that's what we've seen over the past two weeks is that that looks awful because it is, right? Okay, so would you be willing to eat less meat? We'll end on this question here today. Would you be, look at how cute that the, the actual cow is. Uh, and then look at that, whatever that is that's wrapped in bacon. Oh my God, that's a heart attack waiting to happen. Looks a little delicious though. Uh, would you be willing to eat less meat in order to slow glo global warming or climate change and stress the environment? Half as much would stop eating meat. Mm -hmm. Meat, nope, <laughs> or sorry, or meat is gross already there. Um, yep, I just mood for you today, everybody. That's my day. Hey, okay. Um, let me look at the top hat and survey says, would you be willing to eat less meat now? Let me first say that as I propose you eating less meat, I'm not that guy. Okay, I have reduced my meat intake because I'm 47 and heart disease is the number one killer but I love me some barbecue. I'm all about some tacos. Can't get enough of that uh, barbecue chicken. Anyway, um, I, so I am on no, you know, whatever, like righteous hill throughout the course of this whole semester. 
except when it comes to racism and discrimination, like I said, I'll denounce that. And that's my righteous hill. Uh, let's get back here. How did the class answer? Half is my, okay, so 39 people out of 87 people are willing to eat half as much meat. That's a, that's a big deal. Would stop eating meat altogether? 18. Wow, that's a lot. Um, meat, nope, that is 13. Good, excellent. That's, that's important too. Um, uh, meat is gross already there, 13. So it's interesting because meat is gross and won't quit meat. Same number of people, but overwhelmingly, um, the class is willing to slow down or stop their meat consumption. I mean, I mean, this is this is pretty this is a pretty big deal because I will tell you that over the years I have seen the number of people that would change rise dramatically. Why do you think that is, or why would you be willing to change this? I mean. I probably wouldn't be willing to not eat meat right now. I'm just, just, just me. I don't understand veganism because I have chickens and they make eggs and I don't want those eggs to be wasted. I know I'm judgy, but but for people that are either already there or would reduce their meat consumption, I can, I can understand reducing it. And so many people said that they would. Why? And I'm going to tell you and ruin this ahead of time by saying you don't have a choice. For all those 13 people that are like, nah, you also don't have a choice, unfortunately. And that's not me, that's water and changing concerns and how much energy goes into like producing a pound of meat. You know, that's all of that future stuff. In the future, your meat will be limited. That is a reality because of water and other limits. But for now, why did you answer the way that you answered? And why, does, why is this number increasing? Why are students increasingly willing to, to go along with reducing that? Is it cost? Is it personal preference? Is it more people are trying out veganism than ever before? I don't know, what do you think? I personally think it's just the ethics. Like, that's why I said I would give it up is just, um, you know, like you hear all the horror stories of what goes on in the factories when it comes to them, like actually like butchering the cows. Like, I know that there's been like pushes to make it less, uh, you know, like to make it less, I guess, uh, inhumane. But I personally am trying to just not buy store-bought meat anymore. I have a family of hunters, so I still get, a, I still get meat, but it's just a, uh, what we gather because obviously you know you don't always get what you want <laughs> when you're hunting so it just uh you know like I know a lot of people don't like hunting but that's just what we do that's what my family does and it makes me I don't know I feel better about it than other than knowing that a cow's being injected with hormones and just uh not being able to move around <laughs> so good so. absolutely a consideration massive one um other thoughts um, I have been vegan for like five years now and something that I realized is that it's so much more like accessible to be vegan now than it was even back then. Like I can go to a restaurant and find a vegan option. So I think that's probably why the like number has been increasing just because it's more accessible to find substitutes and everything that people are willing to like try. It really is. Um, and I'm like one of those, I grew up with The Price is Right, was like one of my favorite shows. So I'm like one of those comparative shoppers. So I'm not just a person that's gonna be like, organic's expensive and I can't do it. I'm like, I wanna go find what's on sale, where and how it's being competitive. You know what I mean? Like that kind of thing. But there are so many more uh, choices. It's, it's, it's stunning. I don't even know. Yeah. I mean, and we're in a very small period in time in history. If you want a lobster ship to you tomorrow that was just swimming around today or a kumquat from the depths of the jungle and get it to you tomorrow to eat, you likely can. But this is a very small attenuated window of time in history when this is available to us. It's, it's kind of a much more unique thing. Um, good. I, I have to ask a question here. Some, okay, because I'm a sociologist, TikTok vegan teacher ruining the image. This teacher is terrifying. WTF. That's crazy. <clears throat> Okay, so fill me in. I'm a sociologist. I want to know: Is there a TikTok vegan teacher? You've got me. You've got me hooked. I can only. The take question a is where to begin because this lady is absolutely nuts. Like she will, for example, one of the most recent things that I heard about her is uh, there's this like one famous kid who's like 16, and he said he was at college and surrounded by girls, and she was like, "It's okay." find yourself a good vegan girl that'll take care of you and was like really oddly sexual with him it was absolutely disgusting and terrifying and she got called out and was like 
you guys are just mad because you're not vegan. Okay, okay. So let me understand this. She is to veganism what the guy with the buffalo hats at the Capitol riot is to organic food? Yes. <laughs> okay. Because the second that I saw that news thing that night and says, this guy wants all organic food from prison, I'm like, dude, you're blowing it. Organic food doesn't need another person to ruin its image. Come on, man. Uh, then I found out he was a deplorable white supremacist and didn't consider him again in my thought process ever from that point on. Okay, okay, good. So, all right. Well, so I guess that is actually an interesting thing, though, which is diets changes the image that somebody gives of whether veganism is attainable or whether it's not or whether it's a you're, you're right wow see that's why i love looking at these things through a sociological lens um somebody came into vitamin cottage last year and told julie they were looking for a meatless meat burger because they were a fifth level vegan and she said what's a fifth level vegan and he said i pretty much can't eat anything with a shadow and I, and julie who's worked there for a long time was like you should probably then not be trying to eat something that tastes like meat. She couldn't say that, but she was like, so you want the burger with the fake blood then? I don't understand what's going on here. Okay. Um, I think they do have that, right? Like beet juice or something like that. Someone that fries up. Wow. Technology. Um, okay, good. So a lot, a lot of people don't have an issue eating meat because of how disconnected people are from where they get their food. Look, I think we are very disconnected with that. For people that hunt or fish or do that, these animals look at you or that have family farms, they are living, breathing things. And um, last semester for the first time ever, we got onto a conversation about uh, sad cows. Like, and this is a Buddhist kind of theory, which is if a cow lives in fear and poop up to its you know, chest its whole life and has a horrible slaughter death and they take it with a, you know, a, a little four by, or a little bobcat and shove it in there, then what's that meat like when you eat it? You know, what does that scientifically do to the meat? Is it just a theoretical type of a consideration? Um, but how the meat is where it comes from, how it spends its life is something that people are considering now. And I think at least bears consideration um, on some level for sure. Uh, Cruelty-free diets. Uh, veganism has a black history, mostly seen a rich white people in America today. We were actually talking, um, yeah, we were talking about this. My family was last night about veganism, what socioeconomic groups probably try it, why don't certain groups get into yeah. anyway um i think a really interesting thing for us to talk about but we will wrap it up there today now before i do wrap it up though and send you off into the world to be good people and do good things uh do you have any questions for me about this class we are in chapter one you should be reading chapter one um, I'm going to continue to lecture on chapter one and probably wrap that up on Tuesday. I will keep these questions open until Monday, but I will release new questions. They will end on Tuesday evening because I would like for us to answer them before class. What do you think? Thumbs up on the top hat? You know, I really do think that the way that it interacts, that we get to process these things, if this was strictly a biology class, maybe not. This is a social class and we're going to have to make these connections, like I said, all semester long. All right. Uh, how are we meeting for stations? Are they online or in person? I uh, need to get some, seems good. Okay. Uh, all right. Uh, any questions? Class, I'm, I'm fine with this class. Gives me hope in humanity. I'm just fine with if this class gives you hope for Thursday. Let's start there, shall we? <laughs> um, could you put the Zoom link on Canvas page? Yes, I, I will. Um, I'll put it up in announcements. I do see, though, that the one that I put up from the other day on the YouTube page, if you head over to the YouTube channel, uh, and subscribe right when that comes up, that's fine. If you don't want to, I will embed this class period in modules, likely underneath the, the chapter one stuff. That's where, that's where you'll be able to find it. It'll be a YouTube link. So however you want to do it, it takes, you know, 20 minutes to process. Uh, you don't want to know that I'm going to go across town and buy groceries. So it might be a little bit today uh, before I post this link, and then I will. All right, any other questions? I'm fine with, fine with any other questions or considerations. Uh, I have a question about uh, chapter one that you mentioned. Yep. So does that mean the introduction of the textbook or the first chapter with content about, I think it starts with like greenhouse gases or something. Um, I'm giving an intro, but then we're rolling into greenhouse gases. So I'll just say yes. Okay. <laughs> yes. Uh, other questions. All right, people, be good people, do good things. Wear your mittens, yo. All right. Talk to you later. Have a good day. Peace, everybody. Take care. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you.
we did have a little bit of Thank a glitch here, so I'm hoping up that the recording withstood its, you know, whatever it's supposed to do. Anyway, take care, everybody. Bye. Thank you.